Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at single phase full wave rectifier. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram of a single phase full wave rectifier. Fundamentally, we are aware that a rectifier is basically a device that is used to convert AC to DC. That is, when you're applying an AC sinusoidal signal at the supply terminals, we will be getting a DC voltage at the load terminals. But why do we call this as a full wave rectifier then? So in order to understand this, we need to consider the operation of this circuit. So considering the circuit diagram, we have four diodes, diode D1, D2, D3, D4, connected in a form of a H bridge, isn't it? We also have a transformer that is connected at the source terminals, and this is not mandatory for the circuit. It totally depends on the requirement. Now in order to understand this circuit in a much better way, let us consider what happens to the circuit during positive half cycle. So during positive half cycle, that is, the sinusoidal supply voltage will be positive and negative in this particular fashion, isn't it? Consequently, assuming equal amount of voltage will be induced at the secondary terminals of the transformer, so the polarity will be plus and minus Vs at this point. So because of this, what happens? Plus is connected at this point and minus is connected at this point. We know fundamentally for a diode, we have two terminals, that is anode and cathode. When anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative, then we call it as forward biased condition, isn't it? Otherwise it is reversed biased. So if you carefully observe anode, that is anode of diode D1 is connected to positive and cathode of diode D2 is connected to negative. That means diode D1 and D3 are, D1 and D2 are forward biased and as a result, they will be acting as short circuit in this particular fashion. Whereas positive is connected to cathode of D4, as a result, it will be reverse best and acts as open circuit. Similarly, same thing happens with respect to D3 as well. Now, considering the current, source current, IS, is flowing through this path, what will happen? It will flow through this path, and it will not flow through this path because there is an open circuit here. So it will flow through this path, and it will flow through this path, flow through the load, it will come to this path, and if you carefully observe, no current will flow through this path because it is open circuit, diode D4 is open circuited, so the current will flow through D2, and it will flow through this path, flow through this path, it will flow through this path, and it will return to the source in this particular fashion. Now, what is the major observation that we can see from the circuit? If you carefully observe, let us assume I out is the output current. That is flowing. So what is the output voltage? Plus is directly appearing at this terminal, isn't it? And minus is directly appearing at this terminal. So the output voltage V out is basically positive. And what is it equal to? V out is basically equal to Vs, isn't it? Because whatever we are supplying is directly appearing at this terminal. So that is why V out is equal to Vs. So the output voltage will be positive. Now what happens during negative half cycle then? During negative half cycle, the supply will go in the negative direction because it is a sine wave, isn't it? So we will have minus and plus and minus and plus will be induced in the secondary side as well. The current will be flowing through this path, that is it starts from positive, so let us assume IS yes is this and minus is connected at this point and plus is connected at this point. Because of this, positive is connected to that and positive is appearing at this point. Because positive is connected to the anode of diode D3 and negative is connected to the cathode of diode D4, D4 and D3 will be forward biased. Whereas diode D1 and D2 will be reversed biased and acts as open circuit in this particular fashion. So because of which what happens, the flow of current will be through this path and it will be through this path because no current flows here as it is open circuited. Current flows through this path, current flows through the load, current flows back to this point and since this is open circuit, current will flow back to this point, current will flow through diode D4 and returns to this path and current will return back to this point, isn't it? Now what is the observation again? If you carefully observe, if we call this as I out, current is flowing in the same direction as it was in the previous 
case, isn't it? That is from this point to this point I out. And consequently, if you carefully observe the voltage plus is appearing at this point and the voltage minus is appearing at this point. And what are we supplying? We are basically supplying Vs. So the same voltage will be appearing at this point. So V out will be equal to whatever we have supplied and it is having the same polarity plus and minus in this case and plus and minus in the previous case as well. So what I'm trying to say is during both positive and negative half cycle of the sinusoidal signal, the voltage is rectified. That is AC is converted to DC. Now you might be having a confusion as how do we say AC is converted to DC? In order to understand this point, we need to look at the waveform. Now let's take a look at the waveforms. So we had considered the supply voltage to be sinusoidal in nature, isn't it? So let us label this as Vs. And let us extrapolate this. So we need to understand what is the output voltage waveform so that the conversion is taking place. So let us label this as V out. So this is with respect to T. The x axis, all of them are with respect to time domain. So we have a sinusoidal signal and we are trying to understand what is the nature of output voltage waveform. In order to understand this, let us consider our circuits that is, what happens during positive half cycle and what happens during negative half cycle. So during positive half cycle of the power supply, that is, the supply voltage goes positive, and because of that, what was happening? Diode D1 was uh, short circuited and diode D2 was short circuited and they are forward biased and V out was equal to Vs, isn't it? So basically we are getting positive voltage at the output terminals. So we will be getting a waveform in this particular fashion. That is because of the conduction of diode D1 and D2. Now what happens during negative half cycle? In this case, what was happening is that diode D3 and D4 was forward biased and we were still getting V out is equal to Vs, isn't it? Because of that, during negative half cycle, although the supply voltage goes negative, we are still getting the same polarity. That is, we are getting plus V out only in the negative half cycle as well. So we will be getting a waveform in this particular fashion. So this waveform is basically because of the conduction of D3 and D4. Similarly, the cycle repeats again D1, D2 conducts, again D3, D4 conducts, and we'll be getting a repetitive waveform. So basically, this particular AC signal is converted to a pulsating DC. So AC is converted to pulsating DC. So we are not getting an exact DC waveform. Further applying a capacitive filter at the load terminal, we can get a pure DC. But this is a pulsating DC. Remember this point. We have to also understand what is the voltage waveform across diode D1 and D2. They are the same. And what is the voltage waveform across diode D3 and D4? So during positive half cycle, that is when diode D1 and D2 was conducting, what was happening? Diode D1 and D2 are conducting and acting as short circuit. For a short circuit, when the diode is acting as short circuit, the voltage drop across it will be equal to zero, isn't it? So we will be getting a signal that is starting from zero indicated in purple over here. And during negative half cycle, what happens? D3 and D4 will be conducting, whereas D1 and D1, D2 was open circuited, isn't it? So D1 and D2 are open circuited. So what happens? The supply voltage, that is negative voltage, in this case, that was minus and plus here. So negative voltage will directly be appearing at this point, that is to D1. So negative voltage will be appearing at this point, and that is why you'll be getting a negative voltage at this terminal. Similarly, what will happen during the next cycle? The cycle repeats. You'll be getting zero voltage because the positive half cycle is continuing. Again, you'll be getting a negative voltage in this particular fashion. Now, what happens to VD3 and VD4 voltage waveforms? It will be quite opposite to VD1 and VD2, isn't it? During positive half cycle uh, of the power supply, diode D3 and D4 are reverse biased and negative voltage will be appearing at D3 and D4. So that is why you will be getting a negative voltage at start. and as the cycle progresses during the next half cycle, D3 and D4 are conducting, the voltage across it is equal to zero, and that is why you're getting zero. Again, the cycle repeats, and you'll be getting zero again at last. You have to 
derive two expressions that is the average output voltage and RMS output voltage and these are required for solving numericals and also they're very important as a part of analysis. So the average output voltage is denoted as V out and it is given by 1 by pi into integration of 0 to pi into Vm sin omega t. This is based on the fundamental definition of the average output voltage or the average value expression. So V out is equal to, can we write Vm by pi? I am taking Vm outside the integral and integration of sine is basically minus cos omega t and applying the limits that is 0 to pi in the next step. So V out is equal to Vm by pi into integration of let us consider minus outside so cos pi is basically minus 1 minus of the lower limit cos 0 that is plus 1 so you will be getting 2 here so v out is equal to 2 times vm by pi very important to solve numericals now the average output voltage let us consider as v out r and fundamentally by the definition can we write square root of 1 by pi into integration of 0 to pi into Vm square sin square omega t into d omega t. This is again by the fundamental definition of RMS value. So can we write V out RMS is equal to the entire square root take Vm square outside the integral and keep pi as it is. So can we write sin square omega t as 1 minus cos 2 omega t whole divided by 2, isn't it? In the next step, let us solve for the integral. So V out RMS is equal to square root of Vm square by pi into integration you will be getting 1 by 2 integration is omega t by 2 minus sin 2 omega t whole divided by 4 this is by applying chain rule that is cos omega t integral cos to omega t is basically sin to omega t and you have 2 also so basically integration of 2 omega t you will be getting 2 in the denominator so 2 into 2 you will be getting 4 over here I hope this point is clear now we still have the limits that is to be applied that is 0 to pi so v out rms is equal to square root of Vm square whole divided by pi into omega t by 2 is basically pi by 2 minus sine pi is basically 0 and again minus of 0 by 2 that is 0 again plus you will be getting sine 0 as 0 so you will be left out with pi and pi getting cancelled and taking Vm square outside you will be getting V out RMS is equal to Vm by root. Another important expression to solve the numericals. Please make a note of it. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of the operation of a full way rectifier and also the analysis of the entire circuit. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Please do give your feedback as well. Thank you.